school and graduated in 2004. After her high school graduation, she studied veterinarian, veterinary technology at Johnson College in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Ms. Zablotny currently holds the title of Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania 2018 for the Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania program and Miss Wheelchair America organization, which are both nonprofit 501c3 organizations. She is a full-time advocate for individuals with disabilities and an affiliate for an independent makeup company and models their makeup. She is also a board member for the South Central Pennsylvania Center for Independent Living and the Director of Recruitment for Miss Wheelchair America. After her reign has ended, she will be taking over the position of Vice President for the Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania program. She has been a volunteer for the Wimber Christmas for the Kids event hosted by the Wimber Police Department every year since 2012 and was the People's Choice Award winner at the Miss Wheelchair America competition. She has also been featured in the Johnstown Tribune Democrat, Our Town Magazine, the UPJ Advocate Newspaper, the Wimber Spirit Newspaper, and in a positive pageantry magazine created by the Brains, Beauty, and Heart Organization, as well as being featured multiple times by the WJAC and WTAJ TV News. In her free time, Barb enjoys spending time with her six rescue cats, watching Netflix, going to the gym, hanging out with family and friends, doing makeup art, and spending hours on the phone with her Miss Wheelchair America sisters, and writing and filming video footage of her YouTube channel. It is my pleasure to present today's keynote speaker, Ms. Barb Zablotny. Good afternoon, graduates. I'm sure you all are excited. You worked so hard, and now you just have to wait a little bit longer and listen to me speak for the next 15 minutes before you get your diploma. I'm really sorry. <laughs> about who I am and why I was chosen to be your commencement speaker, which is actually a really great question because I'm even still wondering that. <laughs> My name is Barb Sablotny. I was born and raised in this area. I wasn't born with a physical disability, but I did struggle with dyslexia, but never realized it until about eight years ago. School was always hard for me because of that. I still want to be a veterinarian though. After getting into Penn State, I realized learning in a university setting was definitely not for me. Over 100 people in one class while you sat in an auditorium and took notes in your lap. I decided to change my major to veterinary technology and become a certified veterinary technician. I found what I thought was an amazing school in Scranton called Johnson College that offered what seemed to be an amazing veterinary technology program. The setting at Johnson College was much better with smaller classes and more one-on-one -on -one time with the teachers. If you were struggling, they offered free tutoring, which I took advantage of often. I struggled badly to get through the two and a half years I went to school there. I saw my classmates just excelling and understanding things, and I sat back not knowing what was wrong with me. Why didn't I understand things like they did? <coughs> But I trucked through the book work and only had a five-week internship left until I had that coveted diploma I dreamed of since I was in high school. I worked my behind off, so naturally I knew I was deserving of this degree. But life had other plans. After spending the holiday with my family, I was driving back to Scranton to work and prepare for my internship that was going to be this, at this amazing vet hospital that saw exotic animals. When I hit a patch of black ice, lost control of my vehicle, and wrecked into some trees, I was paralyzed on impact due to not wearing my seatbelt. In the blink of an eye, the course of my life would change forever, and I thought I would learn, and I would learn more than I ever thought was possible about myself. The first year, I focused on physical therapy in hopes that I would walk again. Not even a year after the anniversary of my accident, my mother died suddenly in her sleep. This had to be some horrible nightmare I was living. I didn't plan this for my life. My life was supposed to go how I envisioned it. The plan was to graduate college and have my mom be there to watch it happen. Why wasn't life going my way? 
Shortly after that, my fiance at the time and I ended up breaking up due to his battle with PTSD that he got while serving our military as a Marine. He, he refused help. I should have been able to save him though and make him get help, right? He was the only thing that got me through my injury and my mom dying. We were going to get married, settle down, and enjoy life together. That was my plan. Why were all the ideas and plans I had for my life just not happening? I wanted all of this to go as I planned, and it didn't. I struggled with depression after, and chose to not make plans and just live life day to day. What was the point? Because the moment I planned to do something, life was just going to rip it away from me anyways. My plan was just to survive that day, somehow, some way. I continued that for about five years, when I realized I can't live this way anymore. Maybe there was a shot for me to finish my internship if they made reasonable accommodations. At least I'd have my degree. I was blessed with an OBR counselor who cared more about me than I cared about myself at the time. He looked into everything and ultimately came back very upset, saying he didn't think finishing the internship was in my cards. He told me he didn't feel that they were discriminating against me, but it sounded like a job I just physically couldn't do. He made the analogy that if I was a roofer before my accident, there's no way that profession would be possible now as a wheelchair user. Another blow, another loss. As a, <clears throat> I was told that OBR would help me go back to school for something else then. The idea of going back to school in that moment made me want to scream. I remember how hard school was for me. The idea of starting from scratch, I couldn't do it mentally at that point in my life. Years kept passing by, and I realized how I was wasting my life away. I sunk into a depression that I didn't even realize I had, until one day I wasn't depressed anymore. I gained 100 pounds while in this depression, and ultimately it made me more disabled. After speaking with some doctors about surgeries that would help me gain independence back, I was told I was too big for these surgeries, and that I would need to lose weight. I started on my weight loss journey, and though it wasn't easy, and oftentimes a nightmare, I managed to lose all that extra weight, and realized just how depressed I truly was all those years. It was during this time I applied to compete for the title of Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania. I just thought it would be something fun to do. I didn't think I'd actually win it. I didn't accomplish that much in the world of advocacy, and my resume was pretty pathetic. The judges saw something in me, though, that I honestly didn't see in myself, and I ended up winning the title of Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania. Let me just say, I'm still in shock to this day that I won. I saw this was my third chance at life. I was going to do this right. I was going to take this seriously, and I was going to make the most out of this opportunity, since so many other opportunities I had planned for my life never happened. I found myself planning my life again, and not worrying about these plans being taken from me in the blink of an eye. I found myself being confident in front of the camera and up on stage speaking. I found myself being able to talk openly about hard subjects most people with paralysis wouldn't want to mention. I found myself finally being part of the disability community. I found myself being a role model for people. I found myself being stopped by strangers while grocery shopping to ask if I was the girl they saw in the newspaper or on the news, then being told how my story touched them. I found myself being asked to events I never dreamed of in a million years I'd be asked to do, such as doing this speech. I found myself being, finding my purpose. Maybe I was meant to help people with disabilities instead of helping animals. There's more than enough animal rights advocates out there. No one likes to see animals suffer and hurt. But a lot of people don't realize every day people with disabilities are being hurt and discriminated against. I've been a victim of discrimination more times than I can count now. The number one thing I was discriminated against will be earning my degree by completing that five week internship. You see, I caught wind that the college allows someone with cancer to do their internship and not complete the test they originally told my OBR counselor and I that were physically needed to be done in order to earn that degree. My OBR counselor and I were both told that the American Veterinary Medical Association has strict guidelines that require tasks using my legs ultimately. But a reasonable accommodation was made for someone else with a diagnosis people are properly educated about 
due to the amazing awareness brought to this terrible disease. I called them as soon as I caught wind and asked if it was possible to do the internship now. Now they are under new management and told me I could physically do the internship, but they have since changed the GPA requirements and course curriculum needed in order to graduate, which now made everything I did in the past worthless. I've had to start over again, essentially. Discrimination happens and sometimes you won't realize it until it's too late. You have to be your own advocate and fight for what you know is right. If you question a scenario, don't hesitate to contact someone, a disability lawyer or even a counselor to assess the situation. I obviously was not meant to have this degree. And to be honest, I don't think I want a degree from a place that treated someone with a disability this way. So because of all that, I don't have a degree officially. And because of that, I didn't feel worthy enough to do this speech. What makes me so motivating to you all? My resume may not look spectacular on paper, but I can tell you I've learned more life lessons in the last decade than I ever would have learned in school. The biggest life lesson, life will not go your way. You can have all the plans in the world and have a picture in your head of how you want your life to go, but life has other plans sometimes. When this happens, don't do what I did and stop making plans and ultimately losing your will to live. You face what happened and adapt to your situation. No one knows what life has in store for any of us, but I can guarantee you that there is definitely a purpose to whatever life hands your way. The purpose sometimes is just to learn something you wouldn't have been exposed to otherwise <clears throat> by learning about it. Life is all about learning, and just because you leave here today with your diploma doesn't mean you're done in life, learning in life. Be open to learning about new things in life. This makes you a well-rounded individual. Life taught me that I have no control over what happens in life. What, but what I do have control over is how I react to what life hands me. That's a hard lesson to learn, but it's an important one. Which I know sounds so cliche, and you know how I know that? I spent a good 12 hours watching YouTube videos on different commencement speeches, and that is something several speakers said. So I apologize for being cliche. I had a hard time drafting this speech because I felt like everything I wanted to say was cliche after watching YouTube. Thanks a lot, YouTube, for making me not feel as unique in my words. <laughs> With that said, I will say some more cliche things now. Now that this chapter of your life is coming to an end, you will be starting a new one. That chapter looks different for everyone. Maybe for some, that means finding a job right away. Or for others, it's continuing your education elsewhere. And for others, it's getting married and starting a family. Whatever that chapter ends up being, remember to be grateful for every moment in that chapter, good or bad. If it wasn't for the bad moments, we wouldn't be able to enjoy the good moments as much. Life is short, and we never know what tomorrow holds in store for us. But what we do know is to approach every day as a precious gift. Be thankful for everything and everyone in your life, as it can be gone tomorrow. Be humble as you go through life, as no one knows everything. Be open and willing to learn. When you learn to listen to others, you'll find yourself learning so much more about life that you wouldn't have known otherwise. We all have our own journey through life, and it is our job to talk about that journey so others can learn what you have learned on that journey. What did I learn in my life the last 11 years? I learned true friends are few and far between. I learned that no one will ever understand 100% what you're going through, but people can empathize with what you're going through, which means they're just trying to be a good friend. I learned that the world is definitely not accessible. I learned that people look at me and instantly think I'm not capable of doing simple tasks. I learned that people with disabilities still don't have equal rights that many believe we have. I learned that my family will always have my back. I learned that finding the perfect wheelchair is a lot harder than I ever thought it could be. I learned that I am actually more capable than I ever thought. I learned that whatever I dream is possible, I can make possible if I put the work into it. I learned that my story could potentially help one person from living with a disability. 
I learned to always say yes to every opportunity that comes my way, as you never know what the future holds and who I will meet in these opportunities. So I will stop torturing y'all and making you listen to me. I'll wrap this up so that you're closer to holding that diploma in your hand that you worked so hard for. Congratulations on all your hard work and good luck throughout life. Remember, life isn't always going to go as planned, but it will go on and you will have to trust in life's plans for you and know there's a purpose for those hard times. Without my hard times, I wouldn't be up here speaking to you all right now. Thank you. On behalf of the December 14, 2018 graduating class of the Commonwealth Technical Institute at the Hyde Junior Center, I would like to present you with this token of appreciation for presenting today's keynote address.